In this video, I'm gonna share with you the three-part structure to create a bulletproof cover letter that gets you more interviews. But first of all, should I even be writing a cover letter? I heard from a recruiter once that nobody even reads it, so is it worth my time? Good question. I would argue that the reason hiring managers and recruiters might say that is because most cover letters are very poorly written. So this is a great opportunity to take average performers and behave like a top performer, right? So you're setting yourself apart from the competition. So how do I write a really compelling cover letter? First of all, before you write anything, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of the hiring manager and ask yourself, what would make it easier for her to choose you? What information could you provide that would make her go, oh my God, I really wanna interview this person. Think about that and write only that. Now, this sounds simple, but compare it to how most candidates write a cover letter. I want this, I've done this, I want this compensation. I, 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 I. And I get it, we all want great things in a job, but the way that you're gonna get to what you want is to first show people what's in it for them. Why should they choose you? So here's where we go with the structure. The first thing that I want you to write coming back to our English essay is, here are three reasons why I'd be a great fit for this role. The big idea to write this is, what is the cover letter for? And who is it for? It is for the hiring manager to let them know, hey, I am the best fit for this role. So once we understand that, then here comes the three-part framework. So I like to think about cover letters like ninth grade English essays. Did you ever have to write those essays where there's like a thesis and then supporting argument one, evidence, supporting argument two, evidence, supporting argument three, evidence? That's exactly how I think about a cover letter. So the first part is your thesis. Dear hiring manager, I'm thrilled to apply for the UX designer position at insert name of company. There are three reasons why I would be a great fit for this role. So that is your thesis. Very clear, very clean. As I'm reading this, I know exactly what to expect. And I'm not doing what most other candidates do, which is like a long form, like essay writing about your aspirations and what I want and my life story. Nobody cares. This is for the hiring manager and it serves one purpose. Why should I take a second look at your application and interview you, right? So here are the three reasons why I'd be a great fit for this role. The first paragraph, is about why you love what they do. First, I love your product. I love the work that you do. The work that you do is inspiring to me. Really, Karen? That works? Yes, because think about how hire managers make decisions. I used to think that they would hire based only on skill set. Then I learned that that's not true. That's just part of the equation. The other part is, show me that you want this job in particular. So a friend of mine was applying to a storytelling company and her first paragraph was, first, I love stories. That matters because this company creates stories, right? So you wanna say, first, I love your product or I love what your product does. And then you wanna say examples of that. So in my friend's case, she said, I love stories. I've created films since I was five years old. I listen to, I go to the movies three times a week or all sets of examples that would prove that you love their product or that you love what they do, right? Anybody can say that they love the product, but your specific examples are what matters. That is the first part of the cover letter. The second part is show me that you can do the work. So second, I have the direct experience as a UX designer to do the job. Then what you're gonna do is, you're not gonna do a rehash of your resume. Instead, you're gonna take the job description and the bullet points for what you need to do and the experience needed or suggested and then you're gonna look at that language and say, which of these bullet points, what part of this language can I use to describe what I have done? You're gonna take your experience, maybe you've done three different projects and you know what they are. And now you're gonna look at the job description and say, okay, worked with multiple stakeholders on this, understood business needs. And you're gonna ask yourself, what part of this language can I use to describe the work that I've done? But Karen, isn't that repetitive? Don't they already know? Think about it this way. Hiring managers have said, this is what I want, and they wrote it in a job description. And then you can say, I have that, by reflecting back, mirroring back the language that they have already used. So you are not randomly describing your UX experience, but instead, 
you are using their language, when appropriate, you're not lying, when appropriate, when it actually makes sense, and you're using that language to describe the experience that you do have, right? So then they're like, oh my God, they have everything I need. They definitely have the UX experience. You wanna show that there is alignment between your career goals and what this company does, right? So one of the hiring managers biggest fear when they're making a new hire is that they're gonna make the wrong decision, right? Because then they're gonna cost the company money. They're gonna have to go to their boss and say like, hey, I made a mistake. And then they have to redo it again and use all of that time again to hire somebody. So you wanna say, hey, this is aligned with my career goals. So one way to do that is you wanna bring emotion to it. So you wanna say something like, third and most importantly, I am fascinated by the changing landscape of FinTech and by making financial tools more accessible to people. You wanna say, what I'm looking for in my career is aligned with the larger mission that your company is doing. So if you're applying, for instance, for a SaaS company that works in sales, you might say, third and most importantly, I am fascinated by how technology can make lives easier for salespeople and for professionals. And when I think about the next five years of my career, what I wanna prioritize is growth and working a SaaS company, software as a service company is gonna expose me to software development that's gonna prepare me for the next stage of my career. So you wanna connect your mission and your aspirations with what the company does. And then you wanna be specific. You wanna tie it to a specific example that shows the hiring manager that you've actually done the research and that you actually know the company. So you might say, and recently I listened to an interview by your founder where she talks about how technology needs to be more accessible. And that really resonated with me. And I wanna be a part of a company that is helping do that in the FinTech space, for example. If you wanna to continue to improve how you present yourself as a candidate, be sure to check out the video on how to create a compelling LinkedIn profile. And if you wanna upgrade your skills as a UX designer, feel free to check out the free course at springboard.com and you can see it listed down below.